Okay, hello viewers. Welcome to my SSDC uh, class five. Um, for this lesson, I'll talk about the uh, operations, how to change gears, all this, the, the gear, and then on the road, and then also U turn. All right. Okay, the road include the turns. Okay. So um. For SSDC, right? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, there is. I believe there is only one mobile crane by the number of two zero one. Okay, and then for uh, PCDC Pan Country Driving Center, there there's is the three hundred over series, right? Okay. Um. For I think for SSDC, there's only one and only one. Okay, and then, um. Because during my time, uh, that was the only one available. Okay, then um, for the test one, uh, test wise, right? Okay, um, the good thing, the difference between a class four and class five, okay, is that for class four, um, there is a specific um vehicle. I think vehicle two one nine, for class four, and then um. But however, when we are doing our lesson, right, we never use this piece, this this class for a uh, lorry. Okay, this one I think there's uh I think a couple of you is reserved for TP, so we never get to use those for practice. So um, but the difference between class four and class five is class four, like I say lah, um, our training vehicles and our test vehicles are different, but for class five, okay. Our training vehicle and test vehicle is the same. So when I train using number two zero one in my test, I was also using number two zero one. So that's a good thing. Okay, class uh four and five, there's no so called warm up round, unlike class two B two A or class two. I think class three, I don't know if there's any warm up round, but for class four and five, um no warm up round immediately. That's it. TP test. Okay, so. Once you go up, that's it. Just immediately do test. So, the the good thing for class five is our training vehicle is actually our test vehicle. That's the difference between four and five. For class four, right? Okay, we were I was training using two zero one. Uh, okay, the class four two zero one two zero two. You know some all sort of numbers. Um, but I never use uh two one nine. So the clutch control is very different. The crutch, the power, every uh, accelerator, everything is different. Okay, so it is a very different uh for class five. So, uh, that's why I always um, uh, suggest uh, if you class pass your class four, go straight for class five. Okay, reason being is when you really know how to maneuver a big vehicle at class four. Okay, the learning curve is much uh not as steep. It's much shorter. Alright, really. Um, I took my class four after I passed. I do my class five, and then the lesson was like next week. The instructor saw me. Okay, ah, uh, you just passed, right? Okay, okay. He didn't even structure the lesson. We almost like immediately do circuit, and then um, he just familiarized me with the gears or this, and then we just do circuit, go on the road, circuit on the road, circuit on the road, revision. There's no ah uh, no longer teaching. Very little. That's why I will talk about the circuit in another video. For now, I talk about the roads, right? Okay. So, okay. Now I talk about the gears, right? For class five. Okay. The gear for class five, right? It goes this way. Okay. Three, four, five, six, one, two, reverse. Okay. In the neutral position, right? Okay, our gear lever is here. When you push up, it is gear three. Push down is gear four. When we start our vehicle, right? Okay, it is always in gear two first. We don't need to go gear one. Gear one is used for slope. I'll explain later. Okay, so when you start a vehicle, right? You set same thing. Your clutch first, and then engage in gear two. Okay, handbrake off, and then move off. Then when you want to get uh go up to gear three, just release and uh press your cl clutch and then shift up. It will spring back and then you push up and then down for four. Okay. 
if you want to go to fiber, you have to push the unit. There's a bit of resistance. You push and then it goes up. That's uh, that's gear five. If you want to go reverse, right? Okay. You just you don't just push. You need to push a bit harder. So there's a stop here. So when you push, you want to engage reverse gear, right? You push once and then you push a bit harder. Then reach the end. Then you go down. There's reverse gear. Okay. Once in a while, you may mix your gear two and reverse. It's quite normal. So it depends on when you uh when you push right the first minor resistance usually that's gear uh gear two and then if you uh push up and then and push further it's reverse gear right so okay so now that we know okay we we usually use gear two to start off then change to gear three four and five five is speeding do not go beyond five okay for now in in the lesson we don't go beyond five. Okay, so um, let me explain to you about the junction, right? Okay, when you are um outside road, right? Okay, um, when approaching a junction, let's say that uh, what do you call a T junction? Maybe I drop it smaller. Okay, usually there is the line here and then okay center divider. Okay, three arrows. Okay. So if you're uh okay when approaching the junction, right? Same as class four, we have to change to lower gear, alright? So when we are approaching this junction if you're in gear 4 all right okay approaching just use the engine brake that means don't press the race accelerator anymore use the gear 4 engine brake and then we are near to this uh this the third arrow if your speed still a bit too fast step on the brake the foot brake and it, and then change back to change down to gear 3 and let the engine brake take over it should come to a roll if at this point right if it's still a green light okay go ahead and then you uh step on the accelerator once you move past this junction change back to gear four and then you move off okay if it is still green okay let's say okay if if down here when you're reaching just nice amber you can actually stop in gear three no need to change back down to gear two when you come to complete stop before moving off, change back to gear two. We always move off in gear two. That is the key. Okay, so let's say lah. Okay, let's say if you are uh, uh manage to get to a high speed, right? Okay, ho hopefully uh, you can have the chance to go to this what we call the five arrow junction. In some of this, uh, what we call um. Uh, junction right there are five arrows. Oops, okay. Oops, let me just see. Ah, okay, good. Just nice. Okay, some of the junction, right? There is five arrows. Five to seven arrows type. Okay, if you are reaching this type, right? Even better. Okay, uh, if you're in gear five, okay. If you're in gear 5, because you are in high speed, you're approaching this junction. If you've got the 5 arrow, right? Before you reach the 5th arrow, okay? Use engine brake, release the accelerator. When you reach almost the last arrow, okay? Tap a bit of the foot brake, change down to gear 4. And then once you don't press the accelerator, let the engine brake take over. Once you're near to the 3rd arrow, change, use the engine brake, you change down to gear 3. And then let it roll, okay? Just, I won't say let it roll, but lot of sort of bit control. Don't press the accelerator too hard. Let it roll a little bit. And then once at this last arrow, still green, go ahead, accelerator goes up, change back up to gear 4, and then move. If if you reach this junction, um, it embers already, right? Turning amber, then you uh, step on the brake, and then just stop. Stop, and then clutch in. Alright, so you will stop in gear 3. Okay, so this is uh, for what we call the 5 
arrow junction. If there's no five arrow, right? If you if you reach those kind of junction whereby there's no five arrow, then what do you do? Okay, when you approach any junction, regardless of what, right? You shouldn't be in gear five, because you should always anticipate for, um, what we call uh, any situation. Okay, don't be like outside drivers like that lah. They all like to speed, but when you are, when you are doing uh learning right, okay, regardless learning or what for safety, when you're approaching the junction, okay, you see that uh, there's a junction ahead, go ahead, release the accelerator around. Um, I cannot, I won't say how many car length, lah, but you estimate, hey, I'm reaching, eh? got the three arrows in front. Okay, from far, I will release my accelerator. And then uh, from gear five, change down to four. And then once you reach the third arrow, change back down to gear three. And then see if it's favorable for you to move forward. Okay, so that is the, the way to go for the junction. Okay, so, um, okay, talking about stopping, right? one of the key things that I want you to take note is when you're stopping right for um, class 5 due to the boom right due to the boom all right I think in my last uh, in my last video I talk about uh, make sure that you view the windscreen from the windscreen you view and then you actually can actually see the stop line okay from your position if you see the stop line some a bit of distance away you can should stop okay um if you cover the stop line the boom is just on top of the stop line okay but um try to avoid that lah. try to give some distance okay don't just simply cover and then uh say that's uh that is good enough no sometimes it's better to leave more distance right Okay, that is for stopping at stop line. But what if, let's say that I got a vehicle in front. Okay, let's say that there's a car in front here. Okay, if there's a car here, right, we should stop our vehicle, the class 5 vehicle, should stop one car length, one car length away. Okay, the boom shouldn't be on top. Okay, there's a big no-no, there's immediate failure. So you should keep one car length. Okay, then you can ask, hey, what if we keep one car length then motor come in front? That's not your fault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, the key thing is allow space for you to roll forward in case and then for the car to roll back. That We need to keep at least one car length. The boom should never go behind any vehicle. Okay. Even though they are small cars, okay, we should never be. Alright, so you should always keep one car length. Alright. Okay. Now, um, talking about this, okay, we talk about, um, maybe I just tell you, uh, I actually um, failed my class 5 the first time round because of the stopping, right? I'll explain to you why, okay. Yeah. Okay, for SSDC, eh, okay, the both the junction when turning out, okay, when you can go to the road segment, right, this is what happened. Okay, I think the stop line is like okay, not so not so bad. The stop line is like that. <coughs> this is out. Okay, and then this is in. And then this is the road in front. Then I think this is center divider. So when we are stopping, right? Okay, for this is the SSDC exit, right? The vehicle when you stop, right? When we're going out, the boom, right, should be behind the stop line. But for SSDC, because the exit, right, is, is very short. <laughs> and then this curb and this stop line is almost in line. So this is the big danger. That's where I flung. What happened was, I just see that, eh, no vehicle. Then when I was about to move out, I half hard because I saw some cars turning out from the car park. I stopped. The boom went out of this stop line. And then the tester shouted, uh, boom out of safety zone. I did not know I flung. <laughs> okay. Boom out of safety zone, flung. So what, what is his rationale? He say, His rationale is, even though the most of the vehicle passing are those uh, small cars, right? I mean normal cars, our boom is 3.6 meters. 
it wouldn't uh they they can pass underneath lah. But when we are driving a crane, our boom should never go above any vehicle. Okay, regardless of their size. So his his explanation is, we should treat this as our limit, as like a part of the vehicle. So you should never exceed out of the stop line and then cause hazard. Because even though the the vehicle small, they can pass. But what if it's a bus or a lorry? They can hit our boom. That's the explanation. So when you are if you're um taking your class five TP, remember. In the when going out to the road segment, right? Do not inch forward. Do not inch. <laughs> okay, do not inch forward. Must make sure the two lanes are totally clear. And then, okay, once you commit to the turn, go ahead and turn. Don't inch. There's no way to inch. Then, does it mean cannot inch at all? The answer is no. Okay. Most of the other junction, right, are more forgiving, right? What do I mean by that? Okay. Other junction, right? If you see properly, this is the junction after the major turn. Stop line is here. Stop is here, and then the curb is here. There's some distance away. You, if you, okay, when you approach this junction, the first thing is same thing. Stop, and then make sure your windscreen, okay. Can see the stop line. You stop, and then that's the first stop. You can inch forward. How much to inch? Okay, the boom should never stick out of this. What we call the curb should never stick out of the curb. Understand? So, um, how do you estimate? Okay, this is the part which is a bit tricky. Okay, I'll try my best to sketch for you to see. Okay, let's say lah. This is our. Okay, I just try to draw in three D, right? Okay, normally if you see this is the stop line, the three D. This is the curb, right? This is the curb side in three D form. Okay, when you stop, right, our windscreen is something like that. Okay, when you see that, eh, the stop line from it maybe not so low lah. Okay, maybe a bit higher. Maybe I should sketch a bit higher. A bit on the high side. When you view from the wind, uh, from windscreen, there's some distance away from your your the end. This bottom and the and the stop line has a bit of distance, right? Your boom is just nice on top of the stop line. So, how much to stop to prevent yourself from exceeding the curb? Okay, based on the windscreen, the two corners, right? When you move out, make sure that this corner, in terms of projection, okay. Should not exceed the curb. That means if you can inch out forward, okay, go ahead and then inch out, right? You can inch out until, based on your windscreen, right? You see, eh, the projection, still some distance away, but then, uh, try not to inch out too much. Like say the boom, sometimes if you misestimate, lah, that's it, lah. Then, then again, can fail, lah. If you stick out of this curb, lah. They'll count you as immediate failure again. So, the only way out is based on this windscreen, the corner, right? You try to project, project, and then say, "Hey, it never, it never. It's not in line with the curb. There's still some distance. You are quite safe. Usually, you inch out a little bit and then see. I think quite close already. Stop, and then see. Cannot inch already. Make sure you can see all clear, and then you just immediately not say immediately. Just commit to the turn and turn. Okay, that is for um the stopping and then uh for junction. How do you approach? Okay, now I talk about turns, right? 
for turning right okay um for class 5 vehicle okay turning left or right right you can turn in gear 3 okay so let's say that from here to here okay when you're turning okay if you are if let's say that in a junction right okay you start off you stop and then you can actually from gear 2 during the turn you can change up to gear 3 and then turn you can turn in gear 3 all right like likewise if let's say that this is a filter lane okay you can also turn in gear 3 okay something about the filter lane i want you all to take note okay for filter lane right it's usually like that and then you must see look ahead and then think if let's say that this so-called filter lane is very short this distance is very short okay this is what the instructor mr tan is trying to explain to me he said that if you keep your vehicle in the center and you stop highly likely the back of the vehicle will be on top of the pedestrian crossing the zebra crossing so to avoid this situation if this give way this this filter lane pocket is very short right he said that the only way out is okay approach this junction keep left keep left first and then try to towards the back do a I won't say hard right, but do a right turn so that you become okay, not so obvious, but something like that. You should stop in this way. Okay, hopefully, I, I, <laughs> I think I'm just making the whole drawing a bit worse. Okay, he, he wants us to stop it in this way. Okay. So that the back is off from the pedestrian crossing. Okay, how do we achieve this? That means instead of approaching uh, this filter lane from the center, right? He wants us to approach more towards the left. And then once you pass it, you can start to steer um, like almost two rounds to the right and keep the vehicle so that the back is off from this uh, pedestrian crossing. Okay, I don't know, is it immediate failure? I don't think so, maybe points, but um, the tester for my case, um, maybe I was quite lucky, like, I didn't got it. Like. But you must watch, right? I mean, next time after you pass, when you are driving a mobile crane right, or a long vehicle, use this technique. That means we approach this kind of short uh, pocket. Keep left first and then uh, steer hard right. <coughs> okay, sorry. Throw a bit dry. <laughs> Alright. So that is for filter lane. Okay. So um what else? Ah yes, approaching this kind of turn. Okay. Just now when I told you about um stopping um Junction right, is always five, four, then three. <coughs> we are approaching this kind of filter or left turn junction, right? Or even right turn, regardless. Okay. Okay, maybe I should just zoom out. <coughs> okay. So let's say that when you approach this junction, okay, and let me try it then again. Okay, um, Okay, there's one junction outside SSDC, right? I think it's like that. Okay, and then I think this is straight. Okay, and then there's this uh, arrows, which is like that. Turning arrow. And then the zebra crossing, right? Okay, so what happened is... When you're approaching, we're entering this this uh, filter lane out for a left turn, right? If you're from a five, you're in gear four. Try to use engine brake before approaching to this junction, and then um, when you enter, right, try to step on the brake and then enter in gear three. 
and then use a build engine brake if there's pedestrian crossing stop if not go ahead and then just gear 3 all the way uh, in the giveaway line if no vehicle don't need to stop use go out in gear 3 and then gear, go up to gear 4 so when you come inside you must be in gear 3 so approach in gear 4 if you're from far and he says left turn from far then you say hey okay I want to stop down to uh, gear 4 engine brake and then slowly go down to gear 3 and then enter this and turn okay so that is for filter pocket okay um, something I forget to tell you right talking about the boom right okay because when we are outside the road we will see a lot of this uh, what we call um, traffic light right so if you're going straight and then there's this overhead traffic light okay your class 5 vehicle because we're on the left lane so when you're moving straight right you must do a boom check check your boom okay that means approach this one and then you just tilt uh, your head down and then look at the boom if it hits this one I mean normally you won't hit lah but you have to do your safety check because this is part of the safety check alright likewise okay if you're doing a right turn right turn is a bit more forgiving because if this is a two lane most of the time the traffic light right is, is on the left side so we are doing a right uh, right turn Okay, let's say that this is a two lane. Okay, most of the time um you miss it lah, but for me I still do a bit of check lah in case. Okay, one more check is uh overhead bridge. Okay, for overhead bridge, right? Uh there's some overhead bridge around SSDC area. So when you are going to go under them, right, you need to do again boom check. Okay, check make sure that they can clear so approaching junction okay always approach in gear 3 remember that and then when uh, approaching this overhead uh, this uh, overhead traffic light do a boom check all right you must remember to do that because this is under faulted under safety check okay so okay mm. what else did I want to say Okay, I don't think okay. Um, overhead. Uh, oh yes. Okay. Uh, regardless of what, right? You um, even let's say not a junction. Okay. Um. Let's say that it is a straight road. And then there is a traffic light. There's one outside. SSDC when you're approaching this regardless of junction or traffic light or what always approach in gear 3 ready to stop and then once you pass uh, once all clear pass by remember to do your boom check okay so that is um, the thing okay now okay one uh, now I'm going to talk about U-turns right so like same as class 4 there's uh, two type of U-turn <coughs> Okay, there's two type of U-turn mm. The big one Which is a bit like filtering <coughs> And then I think there's something like that um, I think there's a arrow here. Arrow here. And then I think there's an arrow here. Okay. <coughs> okay. Mm. So when you approach this junction, like likewise, like I was saying earlier. If you are in gear 4, when you enter here, you should be in gear 3. And then, when you approach this arrow, okay, you should be in gear 2. Okay, you can turn, you, you can you turn in gear 3. It's not say impossible, but if you are going to stop, 
then my take is prepare to change to gear two. Okay, for U turn. If you're not confident, you can go and turn U turn in gear two. Okay, do a bit of half clutch and then U turn in gear two. Okay, normally we are from far. Um, most of the time we are from outside. Then the instructor said, "Okay, U turn." All right. Then from gear four, engine uh, sit uh from far far away uh, We should be on the left lane here. I mean far further down. And then uh, we will try to signal right. And then once we close to this junction, signal right, engine brake, tap a little bit of brake, enter this in gear three, and then let it roll forward. Use engine brake. Once you go to this arrow, the last arrow before the bend, change back down to gear two, and then just turn the vehicle. Make sure that um, if there is a stop line, stop. If it is a giveaway line. Okay, you must see yeah. Uh, if there's a stop line, you have to stop. If you don't stop, it's immediate failure. Okay, so depending, if it is a giveaway line like this, then you see uh you you just roll slowly and see that if uh the all the junction, the three lanes are clear, then you go. Okay, so for the stop line one, regardless of got vehicle no vehicle, have to stop first. Okay, when you're stopping, like. Same as earlier, make sure that the boom is behind the stop line. Okay, for giveaway line is a bit more forgiving, but still we try to practice safety. Take the boom as part of the vehicle, as the front vehicle, uh, front of the vehicle. So it shouldn't exit the stop line, or it should not exit the uh, giveaway line. And then, uh, if need be, you just try to inch out a little bit. But make sure take note of the boom, and then I say, make sure that the windscreen. When you look at the windscreen, right, the the stop line should be a bit of distance away, right. You should still see the stop line. If your if your windscreen, right, if you look down, it covers the whole stop line. That means you already pass your boom is past the stop line, okay. Okay, so for for this type of U turn, right. You turn in and then you end up in this lane. Okay, so if you U turn, this is a big one, big island. You end up here. Do not go to the other two lanes, right? Okay, so this is one type. Okay, then the other type is the traffic one, which is a bit harder. Okay, the traffic light is here, and then I think the stop. Okay. And then I think there's some dotted lines here. Okay, so um, normally if you stop, like likewise, uh, okay, I think this one is a three lane. Okay, for this type of U-turn, for this type of U-turn, alright, okay, the Mr. Tan actually advised me, okay, once, uh, a bit quite different from class 4, he, he, he said that, uh, for class 4, we say half the vehicle, but then, for him, he said, that, oh, once our shoulder past this curb, blast a little bit, we can start to turn. But a lot of time when I turn, I feel that eh, I'm turning in almost quite close to here. Somewhere, I mean, it, it, I still turn, uh, but I end up almost somewhere here. It's until Mr. Uh, there's a new instructor uh, that uh, took me when I was, when I flung and then I do my revision. Okay. And then he taught me, he said that move forward until I don't see this line. There's two dotted line. Okay. Once I don't see the, the second dotted line, I should start to turn full lock three rounds. Okay, full lock three rounds. And then I'll end up here, which is very true. Okay, so for U turn, right, for this type, okay, uh, you can try. Okay, once is once you your shoulder past this curb, plus a little bit. Remember, pass shoulder past this curb, shoulder, your shoulder, past this curb. Plus, 
some distance and then you turn three full lock you may end up here still okay if not you can try the other instructor's method which is move until your windscreen can no longer see this second dotted line and then you turn full lock you will end up here that's just nice okay when you're doing your, your u-turn remember most of the time when you turn our over the over head uh, traffic light is here so once you u-turn uh need to do a boom check okay most of the time when we do this kind of u-turn right, we our vehicle is stopped and then you will be in gear two okay do you need to go down to go up to gear three answer is based on your comfort level if you're not you can half clutch you turn in gear two it's fine then once you complete the u-turn change up to gear three speed up and go all right okay because you can actually u-turn in gear gear three but if you're if you're you're managing a lot of things you need to check the boom you need to uh, look for the curb make sure that everything pass you know look for all the marking so it's very very um rather a lot of things you you must multitask a lot look at the mirror everything so quite confusing so my advice is uh you for this type of small u-turn go ahead and u-turn in gear two all right half clutch you turn in gear two and then once done change up to gear three all right likewise for just now that that you I say stop most of the time you stop you have to change back down uh from gear three you stop right you can stop in gear three i, I think i mentioned that before you can stop in gear three and then um change up to gear two and then we move off whenever you stop right if you can you can stop in gear three and then before moving off remember change back down to gear two okay for just now that big u-turn okay um i see approach the last arrow you will be in gear two so you can use the gear two half clutch and then uh see if the the turn is okay you turn out and then you change up the gear three speed up okay so this is the way to approach the u-turn okay so i i think i speak a lot already so these are for the roads all right so the next uh, video i do is on the obstacle okay inside the circuit obstacle all right all the best